Okay, guys. So, what did we what do we remember about yesterday, and what we learned yesterday about makeup? Yeah. What what about makeup did we learn? Uh, the history of how princes and kings wore it for hiring. Like the redder you were, the more powerful, the paler you were. Yeah, no, absolutely. So we learned about the historic content of how makeup was established and how it began. And the stuff that it The prosthetics. We learned about prosthetics. Where did we learn prosthetics from? Like, what video was that from? Wicked. Wicked. From Wicked? Okay. What were some other things that we noticed within Wicked? <laughs> mm. They use makeup to make them look older. They use makeup to age? Okay. What else? What else? Because that's good. That's one of them. We're going to talk about some they of that today. They used a specific green, like watercolor mm -hmm. paint. They, they used a watercolor for the green skin to make it more like actual skin tones. Yeah, absolutely. So touching on the idea of old age makeup, that is one of the biggest things that we use in theater anymore. Um, whenever we don't have like someone that actually is of that age. So for instance, high school. We use it all the time in high school. Because can we get a 67 year old to be a student at a school? No, no. So what do we have to do? We have to start aging people who are from 14 to 18 years old. So we use a lot of aging. One of the big things with aging and with any kind of makeup in reality is we want it to look believable. We want to make it as believable as we can. Um, so we have this thing called the 30 foot rule with it. Am I roughly about like 30 feet from you? No, no. no. So, if I were to have old age makeup, we would have me raise my eyebrows to find my natural creases and have me smile so I can have lines right here. And you would be able to tell that that's makeup. You could see that the whenever I smile and I have like these crow's feet on my eyes, they would also be noticeable. If I had underlying circles to emphasize my dark bags, that would be another thing that they notice. However, if we'd say, because we're roughly about maybe 10 feet or so, Let's give it another 20 feet. You're 30 feet away from me now. Does it still look like makeup on me or would it look a little more believable? It would probably look a little more believable. A little more believable? Why is that, Abby? Because it's further away and the further away you are from the detail, the less you can actually see it. Mm -hmm. The more it just blurs itself together. Exactly, and we tie that in all the time with the costumes. You saw the beading work that there was in the other video from Wicked and how those are intricate little details but it does make all the difference. You can see that sparkle, you can see that cluster put together. Um, you see it within sets all the time. You'll go up very close and you'll see that there's lots of little details that don't look prestigious and look exactly how they should, but from afar it's not noticeable. And there's no difference whenever it comes to makeup. Um, along with that, you get the whole idea of how to get that time period in a show done by learning that history of makeup and how it's established. So for instance, like 1920s, flapper era. What was the makeup like? What was, right. what did some people look like during that time? Like, uh, yeah. like dark, dark eyeshadows? Dark eyeshadows? Or like red lips, or like some sort of bright color. Other than Ruth, what are some other things that we've mentioned? Thank you so much, Ruth, I appreciate it. Did they have thin eyebrows? They did have thin eyebrows, yeah. So thinning out their eyebrows and using a pencil to fill it in, start of using pencils and using more of elaborate detail to make it more noticeable. Absolutely, Vanessa. What else? When did contouring start? Contouring wasn't really until about the 30s or 40s. 20s was when you started to become more noticeable with your makeup. For a while, whenever it came to makeup in the late 1800s and early 1900s, so about anywhere between 1900 to 1918, 1919. Makeup was supposed to be seen as something that's more natural, just to emphasize your natural beauty, not necessarily be something so product, like predominant. And with the 1920s being the start of women li like liberation, that's when they started to emphasize their makeup even more to show that freedom. Um, what about with like fun, just random shows like Wicked or with The Little Mermaid or Beauty and the Beast? What are some things that we noticed with them? Like, that makeup. It's not necessarily a time period, so what is there to work with? <clears throat> Abby? Um, they kind of use the makeup to make them look like the thing that they're trying to be. 
like with the Lion King, you use makeup to make them look more like a lion or more like like a lot more powerful at the very least if they have since the the Lion King dealt with puppets and people make them look powerful when their head is back. Yeah, absolutely. So let's do some research into that. When she says Lion King, what do you guys think of? Lion. For, well, for Zebra. the makeup of it. Oh. Lion. Lion. Like natural. Mm -hmm. Tan, more. Red more lips, maybe. <laughs> Red lips. What else? I heard some stuff over here. What was it? I said lion. You said lion? What about a lion do you notice the most? The fur. The, the fur, what else? That's it. That's it? Or the nose. The uh, nose. Where is the Lion King based in? Africa. Africa. So do you think Africa. to get the vibe and the feel since they don't necessarily mm -hmm. use full on stage makeup like they do for Cats the Musical, they might just get some vibes from like African tribes or it looked creepy. Huh? Cats. Cats, yeah, it does look a little it looks a little funny. It's, it's not funny creepy. isn't the word for it. Nightmare fuel is. Yeah. It depends on how you look at it. But no, let's look at some, for instance, for Lion King. What are some of the things that we notice within that for the more Broadway aspect of it? Like, let's look at Nala for example. This is who plays Nala in Lion King. What do we notice? Them eyebrows thick. She looks sort of regal. <laughs> she looks regal? Why does she look regal? It's a great comment. Isn't Nala like... I can't remember if she's Scar's daughter or Mufasa. No. Yeah. She's like a distant, very, very distant cousin of Simba. Yeah. And so they are to get married by the end of the show and is Simba's love interest. I didn't think that she's so related. She's part of royalty. She's part of royalty. Yeah. What else do we notice about her? Other than the eyebrows and like the idea of looking regal. What else they didn't we really change too much to her face. They didn't do too much to her face? Her face. Why do we think that they I didn't do too much to her face and they did more of a tribal um, painting on her? Because of, if you gave it the vibe of Africa, like the forest, like all that. Culture, tribe of Africa, what else? Mm -hmm. They already got things on her lips, so. To bring more ideas and emphasis towards the headpiece so that you can try to focus in on that. Like, I mean, she's maybe, she's if also it's like in a community. Mm -hmm. She has the orange on, right? Like, yeah, there's yeah, orange, orange down on her nose right here. And, on and right here. Right here. Like, yeah. Get some contouring going into it. Yeah, absolutely. Along with that, let's take a look. No, you are just fine. Let's actually get a better picture of it. I like that scar. So we have some painting going on here of a full tribal face. What do we think that that's? What's that supposed to represent and look like? Because that is Rafiki. That's a monkey. Yeah. Rafiki. Mm -hmm. Rafiki is the monkey that starts out the show and tells the fortune of what's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. So like, what's something that we notice within that? The color. The color? The color? What about the colors? That's reminiscent of an animal. It's reminiscent of an animal, okay. What else? Primary color. Primary color, so using very dominant colors to be able to see what, to bring focus in onto that character. Do you think they also did it because the fact that you're able to get a feel and a vibe from the movie and be able to get something to reference it since they're not doing live real animal books? Yes. Good. Let's look up another one. Because along with that, look at those costumes, look at what's on her body. and Does that look like a necessarily a lion, 100%? Mm -mm. No. no, but it gives you a vibe. It gives you that vibe and it opens you to your interpretation of what there it's is. It's like the spandex material, right? It looks stretchy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something so that she can move around in while she also wears this corset. Absolutely. Let's look up. Let's see what we got. Let's see, what do we have here? Great example. 
This is James Monroe Iglehart. He plays the genie in Aladdin, at least dead. He now is playing Thomas Jefferson in Hamilton on Broadway. Um, what's some things that you noticed here? Because he is supposed to represent the genie. Eyeliner. Is it okay he has skin blue or anything else? It just did yeah. like him. We don't have the genie ponytail. Yeah. Well, this is funny. Nope, he's bald. Yeah. I mean, he's bald too. Cool. They bring attention to his eyes by using eyeliner. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's a little bit of like an Arabic feeling to it, not just from the costumes, but from his makeup? A little bit, yeah. Not that much, but yeah. Like it's not that eye, the eyebrow. Really too little. Girls, it's, it's like it's like right in that happy medium of for that culture, because. From what I know, they don't really like to use too much makeup. Mm -hmm. A lot of more natural beauty. Right. And to go along with that, bringing really. the idea of natural beauty, yeah. let's look at what we have here for their makeup, for both Jasmine and Aladdin themselves. I feel like they natural. Did. I feel like they didn't really need too much makeup because they already kind of looking like the character, so they didn't really need too much makeup. Real to natural. I feel like they use it. Like depending on what they what they're focused to paint on, they mm -hmm. use either less or more of one thing than the other. Yeah. So like here's a good idea okay. of what it is. So a lot of just like color correcting mm -hmm. and and just just fixing up the face basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. like getting rid of any blemishes, but that's really about it. Give me a time period. Somebody give me a uh, year. Nineteen sixty eight. Thank you. Nineteen sixties. What are things that we notice here whenever it comes to like hair and the makeup? Color. Color. 1990. Uh, can we get a different picture? A different picture, absolutely. Let's see. Mm -hmm. More colorful. It is a lot more colorful. I kind of like their baby suit. Looking at their hair and their makeup, what do we notice? Well, her eyes really, really pop. They put dark eyes. They look huge. And then her like cheekbones kind of look. She looks like she has really high bigger. cheekbones too. I mean, she probably already does, mm -hmm. but a I lot mean, of contour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And then their hair is seems to the be. Hair like, is like it's bigger. really voluminous. Yeah. Right, it's huge. Oh, it's Got a little bit of a beehive. What they would call it. Yeah. The like the bike like bikers and all of that. Who's the gang? That, depending on what era, there always have been like bikers and gangs in the sense of like making big statements. There were some in the 1950s, like with Grease, the musical. Yeah, I'm seen Grease with like movie. John Travolta in it. God, Grease made me cry. Um, that's some ideas into the time period of things. Let's look at 1920s. It is. What? Good example. What do we see here? Even though it's in black and white, what do we notice with both hair and makeup? The lips are dark and then her, her eyebrows are thin. Her eyebrows are nice. A lot of them have short hair, huh? But it was the time of liberation. The bob definitely came into play. It was volume. Her eyes do look. I mean, it's black and white, so it's probably meant to look something different. But her eyes in the black and white look a little bit more sunken in, so they pop mm -hmm. out a little more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're really thin brown. Oh, yeah. Here's a great example of that with some color. What else do we see? I hear a lot coming from this side, a lot coming from Abby. I want to hear from you guys back here. What are some things that you guys notice within it? It's just a lot of dark colors. Too many diamonds. Or glittering, or whatever that is. Well, let's focus on the hair and the makeup here. Yeah, highlights. there's a lot of diamonds. I see highlights. You see highlights? Blood. She really in her eyes. Eye. She's yeah. highlighting. <laughs> mm -hmm. What about, like, the eyeshadow? What do we notice with the eyeshadow? It's green. It's dark. It's blue. blue. It's dark and heavy? Yes. Okay. Are her eyebrows red or, like, a dark? I think she just has red hair. It's a rather rough, like, a red to a brown. It's Absolutely. Lastly, a lot of blush. Let's for a great idea of what vibe we were looking for. Then let's look at the Great Gatsby. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Young Leonardo DiCaprio was someone. <laughs> Just from this picture alone, with how we have Daisy. What do we see with Daisy's hair? 
She has her little hair. Oh, she has so pretty. She has like a little headband to go yeah. along with it. And it's it's like a pixie cut. Mm-hmm. I'm, I like. I kind of like it. Absolutely. I don't. You don't? Why not? Her hair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It makes her head look like an eight. You know, ET. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
-hmm. So you can look up some things within that as well. We also have here Aladdin the Musical. I give you guys a few examples. You'll have to come up with something new. And then also, lastly, oh, that's falling. That's okay. We also have Les Mis. It's giving you a very broad time for Les Mis. It's 1789 to 1832. What's that about? It is about more or less the French Revolution. So you'll get some history within that as well. Not just history within makeup, but history as a whole. And then lastly, I have Once Upon a Mattress, which is from 1434 to 1437. All right? So, Wait, so with these, whatever we think we have to do the history of their makeup? You'll not necessarily have to do the history of their makeup, but look up their makeup history. Look up past productions of it. Make a Pinterest board from it. And be able to try to get some various ideas. Board. Okay, so what are we supposed to be getting? Like, what are we supposed to be getting? Where as a group, each of you guys are individually broken up, so you two are together. I don't know, like, but like, what, mm -hmm. like, what are we researching? Like, just makeup? Like, show you Yeah, you, like, you'll have to do the makeup both from past productions, because you guys are going to be acting as if you are an original production team. You two are the original designers for a makeup, for whatever show it is that you end up getting. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then you'll have to look up the time period to try to make it historically accurate. You have to look at other productions to see what they've done and kind of collaborate and put together some teamwork into it, okay? What do you mean Pinterest board? What we've just been looking at. So we have to look on Pinterest? You can look on Pinterest, you can look at Google. Just This is the time that I'm letting you guys use your phones to be able to do research. when we find our information, what do we do with it? You'll keep it and then we're gonna go around as a group at the end and learn what each person has gathered about. Okay. Okay, does that make sense? Do we have any more questions? No. No? Fantastic, I'm gonna mix these up. I'm gonna come around and you tell me which one you end up getting, okay? Fantastic. You and Pedro are going to work on that together. Let's go for it real quick because you have to be with her. All right, guys. Which one wants to pick? That eye is red. That's the next one. Yeah. You guys got Shrek? Fantastic. Who wants to pick for this group? I will. All right. I remember the last time I had like two holes. Once upon a mattress. Fantastic. We will have to associate with this because ain't that one of us burning. All right. <laughs> Who wants to pick? Oh, okay. 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 Okay
Just showing me pictures of what you guys have found. And oh, okay. Okay. Oh, that's what I was trying to get from you. Can we get me? That's more clear. Should I, should I do a picture? Yeah, I'm doing a picture. But is that the makeup and the hair of it specifically, or is that emphasizing on like the bed of it? I cannot have one. It's not bad. Say this roughly is going to take the rest of class. So we're going to touch base on it tomorrow on what each of you found, okay? So you have to remember what you found. So if that means taking screenshots so that you can show them tomorrow while we're talking, then we can do that. This person in here? Williams? Oh, she is the student teacher. Ah. Miss Williams. Hey, Journey. Huh? Can you need you for a moment? No, no, no. This was for her, right? That's a new schedule. Oh. But we don't need her though, right? Mm -hmm. That's your schedule, dear. Uh, hey, don't smile. You ain't, you ain't in trouble. You know? Yeah. yeah. Chill. You know, it's good. All right, you guys have a good one. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Do we have a question? I'm sorry. <laughs> during your study hall as well. Come on, find some makeup. Let's be fine. What you got? <laughs> it has to fit the time period and fit the story of what's Whoa. upon a mattress. Whoa. Look up the 1400s. Look up the 1400s. What were they doing, yeah. doing for makeup then? What were they doing for hair? That's my own Pinterest. I look. Can always also, like I said, go to Google and Google some things. What was the time period again? 1434 to 1437. Oh, and that's what makes it great. You guys can elaborate and come up with originality like and look more than just the movie. Like a real look life more version just of, of what she um, really past productions. Like, you know Definitely, you guys oh, can I Google or find oh, things oh, like okay. fairies or gingerbread cookies. Fine, fine. They don't know that's just a great thing for it would be like 
know what to tell you. That would work perfect for the gesture, yeah, of course. What else is there? Um, Look at more than just type, more than just typing in once upon a mattress. I put makeup, <laughs> but type, when I put in a time period, it doesn't pop up. Go to Google, type in medieval, medieval times, medieval makeup. See what medieval makeup pops up with. Yeah, because if you look up medieval times, you're gonna get the restaurant. Uh, Look up more than just the show. Look up the time period to get some history within it, get some context. Yeah, she had a fantasy temple in front of it because it was a ball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She got to swim at the top ball thinking it's making it seem like it's a bra. Everybody knows it's a bra. Well, they did not wear this type of makeup that she did. Nope. Makeup. Nope. Nope. Fuck that. Nope. They was really pale. Yeah. They were it really pale. pale. This like, school was like, made in 2018, 2019. What you talking about, 1789? Oh, the play. Oh. <laughs> the, play the, t the time period that it took place in was in there. Look up the makeup of that time period. Look up past Broadway productions. Look up past productions in general. See what there is that pops up. together now since I do look at the time we still have plenty of time to discuss in small little groups pretty fast. They didn't even have cameras back in the day. That's why I know pictures such a way. There are paintings. Hair. Look some paintings. Yeah, cool. See what the paintings of that time period have. I can't get on the mm, Look I found at the paintings. Kings. I found a painting. Look, look at the kings the in there. France. Well, Mona Lisa. Okay. Yeah. What does the hair look like? Things like that. Keep, don't tell me now. We're going to work together as, and talk about it as a group. I'm not even but look, at, look at the hair. We're going to do it today. I'm giving you guys another about 30 seconds or so. I'm not finding anything. I love her. This is the one that they use for a while. Okay. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Those two images alone. 
What were some things that you discovered within their like within the production itself? Okay. What about my Once Upon a Mattress girls? What did you guys find? Um, that their makeup is like pale red lipstick, thin eyebrows. Okay. What about the hair? You you had a picture of the hair. What was that you saw and you noticed within their hair for the fourteen hundreds? I lost it. I think their hair is like really like poofy. They use a lot of hairspray. That was the 1920s. Back then. 1400s. 1400s. Yeah, they always wore a. Damn. They, they wear hats. <laughs> they be wearing hats. They wore hats to cover a lot of their hair? Okay, so maybe they didn't necessarily have the hair like styles as much, but more of concealed it and kept it a little more modest. Absolutely. What about over here? What about for layman's? What did we find so far for layman's? Okay, I don't have any further. Oh, okay, I didn't find the things like I said the, oh. the you said Paris, all that, all the different types of the what's the part? The numbers, the mm -hmm. years. The years. I, yeah, I searched up stuff like I was like makeup for this about and it was just showing me stuff so, like, for now, so it was nothing. Okay. Always try also to look up yeah. some images of like the paintings that were being painted okay. then because then they were doing a lot of things. Since we couldn't take photography, they didn't have cameras back then, they would paint their portraits. So you could always see what kind of paint, like style there were then just from their paintings alone. What did you guys have? Just the basic Aladdin stuff. Basic. Aladdin stuff. What were some things that we found within Aladdin, both from doing research of possibly like Arabic culture and from the Broadway yeah, it productions. Really us, like Arabic, it was just like showing like people doing like the makeup, like uh, recreating cosplay. Aladdin stuff and stuff. Mm -hmm. Did you guys Google solely just Aladdin, or did you guys also look up other the cultures and like mm -hmm. the historic content behind it? No, we did not do that. Okay, but in like the musical and stuff, it, it's like a lot of sort of. Like they use like the color orange. It's like it's like that. very natural makeup. Mm -hmm. Okay. They didn't really do much like for like the guy that and plays like, it. They didn't paint his skin blue or anything. They didn't do much, like much makeup except for like maybe eyeliner, eyebrows, and stuff. Like that. Okay. Yeah. No, absolutely. What about you guys? <laughs> Well, while you're looking some other stuff up, Ruth, we'll talk with Jasmine. What were some of the things that you found? So, the Chicago, like, a lot of the women. <laughs> girls, girls, shh. Flopper style. Okay. You know, like eyebrows, girls. Dark eyeshadow, uh, bright colored lips, and like a, sometimes a headpiece, and sometimes wig hair. Depending on, you know. What was that picture that you have on your phone? Like? Can you show that to the class? Because that's actually a really good example. Like, 1920s, it was very okay. dark on the eyeshadows, okay. very dark on the lips, very thin on the eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What did you find, Ruth? Well, not all of them had like more like feathers or whatever. Mm -hmm. They had like more like a simple photo. <coughs> you know, like the brushy thing or whatever. Had something to conceal a little bit of their hair yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All the hairs were short. And like they had like no not edges but like their hair was all up here. Uh -huh. And for the men, they had like something like this. So they had a little bit of quaffing and some yeah. gel putting in and some or facial some hair. Some did. Some just had a nice slick back entirely. Yeah. And clean shaven. Yeah, absolutely. Good job, guys. What else do we have? Like, what was your question? Oh no, I was saying that covers a lot of the portraits. Covers part, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. That's right. Everything. And for our last group, you guys had Bye Bye Birdie? Yes. What were some things that Bye Bye Birdie was? Like, what did we find within that? Well, Pinterest didn't really end up giving me too much. Okay. Uh -huh. Except for, I did find how, 19, how in 1950s they did eyeliner. They did eyeliner. They were starting to get more prevalent into the eyeliner. Yeah. And, uh, and lipsticks were getting a lot more colorful than just red. Mm hmm No, absolutely. And and looking at this woman's face by herself, she she doesn't really look like she has too much going on other than maybe mascara and, and the lipstick. Okay. Could you show that to the rest of the class so that they know what what were some of the vibes in the nineteen fifties? She's feeling herself in that. She is though. Like 
And Pedro, what did you find? I saw that you were looking at some of the hair. What was something you found, Pedro, from hair? It's un what, well, what style does that look like it might be? Like, is she having really short, curly that hair that looks like she's style? style? Or what, like, what kind of feel and vibe can you get from that? Like a sponge? Like a sponge? It looks a little bit like a sponge? Okay. What about... Oh, what? Like, you're coming. <laughs> I mean, they, they don't seem to like the short hair as well. Short hair and having a little bit of like a design or like a pattern or something to put in their hair? Yeah. They like, they seem to like cool. things to put in their hair. Yeah. Having short hair somewhere um, else, I, maybe like a pixie cut or a bob. Yeah, no, absolutely. Those are all really good research images that you guys pulled up, and so I appreciate it. Tomorrow we're going to have Mr. Owens come, and we'll be good. Thank you guys. Have a great day. I did. Like mine's looking out. Oh, that's my eyelashes.